Welcome to this week's video and my jaunt to Portland two days before setting up my booths to pick up a West Elm shelf. But while I was there, I hit some estate sales, a thrift store, some antique malls, and of course my favorite cafe. So follow along with me and at the end, watch while I set up those booths and do a reveal. I rolled into Portland at about 10 a.m. and I was actually one of the first people in line at this amazing estate sale. It was a total madhouse as it usually is at an estate sale, so I didn't get to do any filming, but you'll see everything in the reveal. And then I'm totally addicted to McDonald's iced tea, so I had to stop by to get one. There are some of the haul right there. Such cool stuff. I did get a bite to eat before heading to the Monticello Antique Mall where I took lots of notes for booths that I really was attracted to and um, I actually follow them on Instagram and so it was so much fun seeing the mall in person. Then it was off to one of my favorite antique malls star center mall which is located in the selwood neighborhood of portland they actually have two malls right across the street from each other and i always walk away with some fantastic things So I stopped by an estate sale yesterday, really late towards the end of the day when they were closing, thinking that they were going to be negotiable, um, but they weren't only because today, Sunday, everything is 50% off. So I came in, I scoped a bunch of stuff out and I was up and out super early. Well, for me, because the estate sale doesn't even open till 10 but it's only it's not even nine yet so i'm gonna watch some netflix i've i've really kind of come to enjoy this show called manifest so you got to check it out but anyways um i found a bunch of sticky notes in my laptop bag and i didn't have a pen so i stopped by to get some tea borrowed their pen and wrote sold on a bunch of sticky notes and i wrote my name and put an empty coffee cup up at the front door so, so people know when they start coming that i'm first in line i just happened to steal that idea from somebody that did that yesterday with a couple paper bags i thought that was pretty clever 
So anyways, wish me luck. There was a ton of stuff at this estate sale. I doubt I'll get to do any filming because usually when you go in, like people are just in a fever, like trying to grab everything. And that includes me. So anyways, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's a rainy morning today. I'm taking off to my storage units. My friend Kevin, bless his heart, is gonna help me set up the booths today. I remembered to pack my tripod, so I'm gonna get some filming done, and hopefully I'll be able to do a walkthrough of the booth and show you everything I found this weekend. I took off to Portland for those couple of days, and I just found so much stuff, but I won't have any time to do an individual Hall, so hopefully, I can get that done for you guys and just walk you through.
got done yesterday just about there's a few finishing touches at my Lander Street vintage location which is more the more industrial uh, more like traditional antiques um, and then today I'm heading over to Epic Antiques which is my boho booth which is way smaller and and in retrospect now I'm wondering if I should have had a um, the opposite way except that Epic Antiques tends to get a younger crowd and that's where they do the big vintage market so to flee once a month so anyways um, they have very limited hours they open at noon and they close at 5 Monday through Friday so it's already 1230 I don't even know where the day went but I feel like my car is jam-packed and I had to transfer stuff from the van and uh, now I'm heading to the ferry which is doesn't even come till 1 15 so I'm gonna see hopefully I can get everything done at the boho booth I will let you know I'll keep you in I'll keep you tuned in Over the three weeks, I scoured a bunch of thrift stores and garage sales for rolling pins, and I think I did pretty good. I got that little guy at an estate sale. And that flag I got at the Ballard Reuse. All of the fraternal order pictures I got from Phil, who's my art provider. Luckily, I actually had um, kind of a good backstock of more vintage industrial stuff. So this booth was actually easier to put together than I originally thought. Like I said, I went to visit Phil and he stocked me up with some great stuff, including those plates and that little brass fender and those books. And those are the juggling pins that I got from that one guy that I bought that French bakery rack that they're sitting on from. I got that French bakery rack for a total of $150, which was a steal. Altogether, I think it looks really good. It's been a couple of weeks now and a ton of stuff has sold, including the two chairs in the back.
Although there were a few things that came out of storage, almost everything in this booth was bought over the last three weeks. And I tried to do my best to kind of set it up like it would look like in somebody's home. Of course, it's never gonna be 100% like that. And you do actually have to really maximize your space, but I think it turned out pretty darn good. Well, thanks so much for joining me on what is this epic adventure of a vintage reselling life. And if you get a chance to get out and do some thrifting, I hope the thrifting gods are with you and you find some fabulous stuff. And otherwise, I will see you next week.